Hi, I'm Joyce Bigelow, and uh, Laurie Farrington and myself are going to be your presenters today. We both uh, are curriculum developers at Literacy Link Eastern Ontario, although we have other lives as well in literacy. I'm the Executive Director of Northern Connections Adult Learning Centres in Charbot Lake and Northbrook. And Laurie is... <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what do you do, Laurie? <laughs> no, that's a good question. Uh, I, basically, I'm a Special Projects Coordinator, which means I do anything my ED tells me to do. <laughs> Some of you may know Linda Conley. That's probably quite a lot that she's told yes. to do. <laughs> yeah. So, first of all, I guess my question overall would be, if I was you, why on earth would we want to use occupational curricula? How did we get into this thing in the first place? And, and we call them curricula, but some of you may call them training materials or workbooks or any number of things. Uh, we refer to them as occupational curricula, or OCs for short. Um, it came about, the whole thing in the first place came about many years ago when we were first thrown outcomes-based learning. And the ministry was saying that everything that a person should learn should be based upon the platform of what their goal is. And I remember being in a number of discussions and people said, well, how on earth are we going to find materials to teach carpenters and materials to teach truck drivers and materials to teach clerical workers? This is ridiculous. And so that was the first thing. Where are we going to get those? Uh, the next thing, is there any ministry people out there? <laughs> was the dislike of the LBS outcomes-based Teal document and where that was leading and how to teach people from it. It was not learner-centered at all as far as we were concerned. The next thing we went and we, some of us went out and discovered essential skills by going to various um, sessions and conferences like this and we came back all enthused and excited and of course you know how dangerous that is. You end up actually doing something. We believed that the contextualized goal-specific learning was more important. So we got together, Leo, Literacy Link Eastern Ontario, put in applications and we started to move towards this type of thing. So I'm going to turn it over to Laurie <laughs> to talk a bit about things. Uh, in my other life, <laughs> uh, I, I'm a bit of an actor at community theater and uh, I can stand in front of 500 people quite easily and deliver lines and wear a costume and very comfortable with that. But um, when I was asked or told <laughs> that uh, I would be presenting at this uh, workshop, uh, I entered into a whole other level of panic. <laughs> and uh, although similar, they're very different skills, which then got me thinking about our learners and, uh, and their skills. Um, learning skills in the classroom becomes difficult when they're asked to then apply them on, into the job. And that's why we've been developing the OC curricula, because it bridges the gap between the classroom and the job. And the essential skills they're learning in a framework or curriculum researched and written with their job goal in mind. So that being said, just with a show of hands, how many people here are so incredibly confident with essential skills and you're using them in your programs and you feel good about it. Anyone? Couple? Good. How many people you know, kind of have an idea and know that you, you maybe you should be heading in that direction, kind of going, I don't really know what to, yeah. more hands. <laughs> how many people have no idea what I'm talking about? Good. <laughs> That's good. So the essential skills. What are they? I'm just going to give a, a, a brief overview of the essential skills so that you have an idea of what, what they are so that when we move into what we are doing with them, it'll make a little more sense. So what are the essential skills? Basically, they're, they're the fundamental skills that make it possible to learn all the other skills. They're enabling skills that help people participate fully in the workplace and in the community. Oh, I forgot, to, I should mention, we do have a French interpreter here. If anybody needs that, just let me know. Um, so, the Government of Canada has conducted extensive research on how these skills are used in the workplace by interviewing more than 4,000 workers across Canada. As a result, close to 200 occupational pro profiles have been developed which describe the use of essential skills in different occupations. And I should say that um, I believe they're revamping critical thinking and working with others, which is good news. 
In addition, a collection of authentic workplace materials have been gathered to illustrate how these skills, uh, such as reading text, document use, and writing, are actually used in Canadian workplaces, such as Measure Up, AWOL, Skill Plan, PTP, and HRSDC. Sorry. You that not every slide that we have is on your sheets for condensed purposes, just so you don't get lost. <laughs> uh, through extensive research, the Government of Canada and other national and international agencies have identified and validated nine essential skills. These skills are used in nearly every occupation throughout daily life in different ways and at different levels of complexity. So the nine essential skills are Reading text, which is understanding materials written in sentences. Document use, finding, understanding, or entering information into various documents. Numeracy, and numeracy breaks down to numerical calculation and numerical estimation. And again, numerical calculation breaks down to money math, scheduling or budgeting and accounting math, measurement and calculation math, and data analysis math. So back to the essential, uh, the nine essential skills, you then have writing, which is communicating with words, numbers, or symbols. Oral communication, using speech to exchange thoughts. Working with others to complete tasks. Thinking skills, and again, thinking skills breaks down to six sort of sub-skills. Uh, problem solving, decision making, critical thinking, job task planning and organizing, significant use of memory and finding information. To the nine essential skills then we also add computer use and continuous learning. So, for more information about the essential skills, visit the essential skills website and it's listed here and I believe it's in your uh, um, handouts, a quick Google search will find it. Uh, how many people have visited the Essential Skills website? Oh, that's good. How many people have visited recently? Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, I, we find that the more that you visit it uh, and the more that you start using Essential Skills in your classrooms, uh, there's, there's tons and tons of uh, assessments and tools and tips and things that you can order for free. Um, so. It's a great place to visit and check out. Let me see. This is uh, just a screen capture of the, uh, the website. Most of you have visited. In 2005, Leo produced eight essential skills occupational curricula to use at adult upgrading programs. And they included call center, food counter attendant and kitchen helper, food processing laborer, healthcare studies or pre-PSW, and PSW stands for personal support worker. In your region it might be called healthcare aid or, or a similar title. And it's slightly different than the other curricula in that the goal of the student is usually going on to further education because in order to become a PSW you have to take a um, certified training. So the goal then is to be um, for further education. Hospitality. Landscaping and grounds maintenance laborer, retail, and skilled trades helper. Then in 2008, Leo produced five more curricula, cleaner, daycare worker, and this is a little different as well because it could be used as an introduction to an, an ECE, early childhood education program, or something similar. Grocery store, store shelf stalker, service station attendant, and truck driver. And again, truck driver is partially geared to the truck driver training, which isn't mandatory, but it's highly recommended. Leo also produced a report on how assessment tools are used in the workplace and a series of workshops to support job search activities. And those are assessment tools in the workplace and supported job search. They can both be used to support the OC curriculum. In 2010, Leo produced an apprenticeship curriculum to prepare learners to apprentice in a trade for which the Ontario Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities requires no more than a grade 10 education. 
This curriculum is now being piloted by two agencies in each region of Ontario, and the pilots include community-based school board and college programs, and it's also being translated into French. Leo is currently developing four more curricula. There's clerical, which I believe Simcoe Muskoka has written one. It's at a lower level, so you could uh, start with theirs and, and have a, a learner move up the skill level. Material handler, which is warehousing. Print machine operator, so they could work in a large printing company or a small quick copy type of business. And public works and maintenance laborer. And these four, will be, these four will be available for free download from NALD in English and French in 2011. Leo has distributed more than 1,500 essential skills training CDs. And although most have been distributed within Ontario, copies have gone to programs in most other provinces and the Yukon. Outside of Canada, we've sold the programs to Australia and the US. Leo provided free copies of the resources to provincial and territorial literacy networks. Leo also distributed curricula to the schools of the federal and provincial penitentiary systems in Ontario. And now I'm going to pass it over to Joyce. We're team, team fighting or whatever that is. <laughs> fighting. So... We're going to move on to a, a slightly different thing. We've covered the essential skills. We just wanted to give you that background in case you, you don't know where it's coming from, but I'm sure over the last couple of days, you can see uh, we were at an OAL, OALC um, meeting earlier today, the Ontario Adult Literacy Curriculum, and it, it's based on the essential skills, so all of the direction we're heading is in this. Um, so while we're discussing here, Leo's occupational curriculum. I do want to make note that there are several other groups that have created curriculum and they're also excellent products and we use them ourselves. Um, so Waterloo District School Board has done one on um, construction worker. It's excellent. It's a huge big thing with wonderful um, samples of workplace documents. Simcoe Muskoka Literacy has done a number of them. Uh, Literacy Network Northeast and LOX Network have all done things based on occupational work. So, I'm going to discuss the process that we've gone through to create these curriculum and um, how we went about it. So the first step we obviously find is identifying the occupations because without one in mind then you can't do much of anything. So the first thing we had to do was consider if there was a need for the workers or for the training. And we also had to consider, is it a reasonable goal for our learners? Is it something that they would be able to achieve as a virtually next step? So to do this, we used a number of things. Labor market research, NOC information. How many of you know what the NOC codes are? National, adult, or national occupational codes, classifications. All right, that's good, most of you know that. Otherwise, if you visit the website, it's excellent. Just Google NOC. And uh, educational requirements, so look into the, the skills. Some of that can be found from the NOC codes, but also sometimes you might have to go to unions, et cetera, to find out exactly what education level they're looking for. And employer interviews to find out if they feel that there's a need and a market for people in those jobs. So if I give you an example of how we went about it for the apprenticeship, which is the one that Laurie and I have most recently finished, <laughs> although we're almost finished the next ones. Um, we, to determine if there was a need, we went around and we found that there is a future need for apprentices and trades workers. There wasn't enough understanding of the apprenticeship fields and the requirements amongst our learners and the public that employers feel that the applicants do not have the essential skills that they need before they start their apprenticeship, that there's a high failure rate in apprenticeship tests, and that 33 trade occupations in Ontario require grade 10 or less. So we moved on, we decided, okay, there is a need for this occupation to have a curriculum, but then we want to know a little bit more about it. So we move into the step two, and that is reviewing the occupation's essential skills profiles.